What's up YouTube? Today we are not going in the field, we're not getting on the tractor, we are simply doing some maintenance on the Land Pride RCR 1260 Bush Hog. Um, as some of you have heard, when I was first acquiring this property, it was overgrown, full of rocks, full of metal, full of wire. Uh, just about anything you could think of was out in that field. Uh, unfortunately, I really couldn't see it. So the first few times I bush hogged the field to get it down to where it is now, uh, I was constantly hitting things, which did some damage to the blades. Um, they're not totally trashed yet. Um, I'll be able to probably sharpen them down a little bit, but uh, I wanted to put some new blades on here to, uh, you know, just do a better job, have a little bit more balance in the machine, and uh, see how it works for cutting the grass as opposed to just bush hogging now. So, if you're interested, please hang out and uh, let's see how we can do this together. Okay, the tools that I'm going to be using today are a pneumatic wrench, a grease gun, some WD-40 or other penetrated oils, a 1 and 1 16th socket, a breaker bar with a short extension if the pneumatic wrench is not uh, strong enough to do it, of course, we have the replacement blades, have safety goggles for when you're underneath. Uh, there's so much stuff that gets trapped up or underneath of the uh, stump trumper down there that it'll definitely be falling in your face. Obviously, rag right for my hand and the implement itself. Um, I'm not just going to change the blade today. I'm going to, well, I'm going to change both blades today, but I'm going to do some general maintenance to it to clean it up, uh, make sure that everything is operating properly and greased up and uh, ready to continue the rest of the season. So while we're discussing this, uh, there is a correct way and an incorrect way to put these blades on directionally. Um, so you wanna pay attention to how it comes off on the bottom, because uh, if you invert it, it's gonna wind up hitting the top of your uh, deck and you obviously don't want that. Um, so yeah, as you see, these aren't very sharp. They're actually quite dull, uh, but they're extremely heavy uh, for the size of it. Um, but once we get down there, I'll show you how to take the other ones off. It's a very simple process, really. Um, there's a, a nut and washer on the top of the deck that you have to pop the cover off of to get to. Then underneath, there's a keyed bolt, uh, which sometimes you have to beat out. If you do, I recommend leaving the nut on it a little bit uh, and tapping down on that so you don't damage the threads and then taking the nut all the way off. Um, it'll drop out and the uh, blades will just come right off. Um, so yeah, there's a, a stump jumper pan on the bottom of this, which uh, prevents the shaft from getting hit on any objects, uh, which would lock up the, uh, the PTO and do some real damage to your unit. So we'll check all that when we're down there. And uh, yeah, we'll get these on and go to work. Please take notice for your uh, safety as well. There are four six-ton jacks underneath of this unit. It is rock solid um, and unable to go anywhere. Um, I have actually also let people know where I am and what I'll be doing and what time to expect me home in case anything does happen. But I'll be able to clearly go underneath of this uh, without bumping into anything with, uh, with the dolly. And uh, I'm not relied on any kind of hydraulics or anything else to hold this up. I have the right equipment underneath of it. And, uh, you know, it's always best to practice safety, especially when you're working by yourself. All right, once the unit's safely secured, all you have to do to get to the bolts that you need is simply remove this cover and find the bolts that are underneath of it. They are closer than you think, so you want to watch your fingers uh, when you spin this around. It's very easy to spin, and they come up pretty quickly, uh, so you don't want to get your finger between the bolt and this side. Um, I have already sprayed the WD-40 on there. These things are put on, I believe, at 420 torque pounds. Um, I do not have anything that's that strong, so I'm just going to try to muscle it back on when it's time and, and pray that it's strong enough. Um, but yeah, this is the access to the bolts from above, and then I'll show you the sides uh, on the bottom uh, that are going to fall drop through. And uh, you pull them out and just simply push it back up, make sure the key's in place uh, with the replacement blade, and move on and start cutting some grass. So here we go. 
Okay guys, so we're underneath of the unit right now. Um, this is the bottom side of the bolt that you just uh, saw the nut for on the top. Your blade, your stump jumper, and your uh, shaft that goes up to the gearbox. Um, the blades spin freely on the stump jumper. Uh, the bolt is keyed, so the bolt doesn't spin, but the blades moves uh, independently. Um, the stump jumper is there to prevent anything from hitting the shaft and seizing the motor. Um, even though there's a clutch on it, it can still do some serious damage to your PTO, so you want to be careful of that. So, uh, without further ado, we're going to go up top and uh, release those nuts, and hopefully these things come off pretty easy. And we'll be back on here, uh, you know, cutting some grass really quick. Um, as you can see, these blades have taken a real beating uh, with the rocks and metal and everything else that I was able to find in that field without being able to see it. Um, and you'll notice, like I said, it's very important to pay attention to what angle and which direction you put these blades on, because if you reverse them, they're going to hit the top of the deck. Um, and it's kind of obvious, I would say, uh, if you were to put it on upside down, but... It is something you want to pay attention to. I believe you could probably accidentally do it and not uh, not notice it until you started it up. So, here we go. And, uh, you know, let's do it. Okay, guys. So, like I said, it's a 1 and 1 16th socket. Uh, fits right over top of this. Conveniently in the hole. And uh, let's hope this thing can back this off. Definitely took some effort. Get it lined back up. Okay. There we have that. The nut. And oh, a little tight quarters in there to get this washer back. And. washer and the nut out. Um, I am going to tap this down, but I'm going to use a, a piece of wood to tap this back through. Um, it looks like it's loose enough to, to do that with. So I'm going to go get a piece of wood and come back and tap this down. Um, I'll show you the bolt on the bottom side with the key, and uh, we'll switch this blade out real fast. Okay, so what I came up with, because I couldn't find a piece of wood that I really wanted to use on this. I'm going to use the wooden handle of a hammer, a little tacking hammer, and a dead uh, mallet, and we'll tap this out. There we go. Just that easy. So it came out, dropped down on the ground, and, uh, and then the next one moves over into its place. So I'm going to go ahead and get on the bottom and uh, do one at a time. That way I don't, you know, get anything out of balance. I have one to reference uh, on the bottom side. And uh, we'll move on to the next one. Okay, so just as a reference, here's the key I was referring to that stops the bolt from spinning. It locks it in place. This lets the blade spin freely while it still stays fast and secure with the washer and the nut on top. I brought this up here to show you the comparison between the old blade and the new blade. Uh, you can see why I said it was starting to get out of balance. This is all chipped up. It's worn off on the top side. Uh, it just generally took a, a pretty good beating uh, out there in that field last year. Because like I said, I couldn't see what I was going over. Um, that field was about waist high. Uh, briars and you know bushes and everything else. Um, and it looked like... You know, judging by the blade, it's is uh, proof positive that there was just stuff out there in the field that I couldn't see. So this year, um, with the exception of a few random things that I'm sure I'll find, um, I've got it all pretty much mapped out. Know where stuff is that I can't move, and have already removed all the other stuff. 
Okay, folks, as you can see, the blade's off. I have the comparison blade on this side. That way I can put my blade in the right direction. Uh, like I said, if you put it the wrong direction, it's going to hit the top of your deck. So if you put it this way, it's at the right direction. The cutting blade's here. The mulching blade goes up. Uh, it's the same on the other side. So what I'm going to do is put the nut in, or the, the bolt rather, and uh, just tighten it down from the top and see if I can uh, make this thing go back together pretty quickly. You got to find the keyway in there and uh, the bolt kind of holds the unit up by itself because it doesn't let it slip down uh, or doesn't let it angle. So the, the gravity of the self of the blade puts enough pressure on the bolt for it to stay there. And you just go up top where you were when you uh, loosened the bolt. You put the washer on and the bolt back on, or the nut back on rather, and uh, tighten it down. Then come down here and make sure it still moves freely and move on to the next blade. And it's that, that easy, that fast. And uh, then you're back in business with a balanced machine and one that's going to cut better and do a better job for you than the busted uneven blades. Okay, like I said, you can see the nut came through. The keyway is where it's supposed to be. So now I just simply put my washer back on, start my nut back on and get it hand tight. All right, there you go. I'm gonna put my air ratchet back on to proper setting and I'm going to send it. So, not that I can feel 420 pounds of torque with my fingers, but that thing feels pretty solid. Um, before I put the cover back on here, I'll use the breaker bar and a cheater and try to get those things just a little bit tighter but that's it uh, now it's just to repeat the process for the next one and uh you're back in business all right guys the only thing left to do now is replace the cap on top just simply presses in and uh that part of the job is complete um it was a lot easier than i anticipated that's the first time i did it obviously um it's, it's pretty elementary, and I believe that most people would be able to do this by themselves with, uh, if they have the right tools to do it. Okay, all I'm gonna do now with this is uh, spray some lithium grease and the parts that move around. Um, it's probably not necessary, but it probably doesn't hurt to uh, give it a little help, make it last a little bit longer. Let that penetrate down into there. Um, these parts really do take a beating uh, between the terrain and moving around and getting lifted up and down by the PTO. Um, you know, firm believer in preventative maintenance saves you a lot of money in the future. With the lithium grease on there, um, that's going to take care of all my moving parts that are not mechanical in nature as far as the operation of the machine. And I can actually already tell the difference in how that moves around. So that needed more than I realized. Um, I'm gonna do the Zerk fittings on the PTO and the uh, main shaft, as well as the rear wheel. Um, and that will complete the spring maintenance for the bush hog. All right, guys. Like I said, I like to uh, make sure the Zert fitting is clean so I'm not pushing dirt into the Zert fitting. Uh, that would be kind of counterproductive. I use this locking grease nipple. Um, it's probably been one of the best investments I've made on this farm, to be quite honest with you. It makes life so much easier. Make sure everything gets in there. You know, a few pumps. Watch for the grease to come out. New grease in, old grease out. And, uh, move on to the other two nipples there's only three of them total on this unit 
Uh, there's one here on this end, there's one on this side of the PTO, and then there's one on the rear drive wheel. Uh, the second Zert fitting I have is located in this clutch area at the bottom of the PTO shaft right before it hits the clutch. Uh, you can spin it pretty easily by moving the clutch around, but I will put this grease gun on the Zert if I can see it. There we go. There we have it. See? A couple pumps. Wait till we see grease coming out. There we go. Just that simple. Okay, the third and final Zert fitting is right here on the back of this drive wheel. I uh, just greased the shaft up a little bit. Um, I'll put this on here and same as the other ones. Push a little grease through. And we are done. Good to go. Okay guys, that's pretty much it. Uh, we replaced the blades, we greased the Zerf fittings, and we lubricated all the moving parts. Um, other than a little cleanup, we are all done. Uh, I hope this video helped anybody out that uh, was trying to figure out how to do it or had never done it before. Um, I do believe that all the land prides are pretty much the same. Uh, I don't believe the base model or the uh, size model matters. Uh, the, the bottom seem to be the same from what I can tell by my research. Um, but yeah, I'm going to put her back down on the ground and uh, get out there and start, start cutting. So I uh, appreciate you hanging out to the end. And if you enjoyed it or learned something from it, please like, share, and subscribe. Talk to you guys later. Let's grow together.